Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, this episode kind of pissed me off because of the way that the girls was acting. All right. They were acting like little girls. Little girls. All right. But you want to come at Ashley so much about, especially you, Giselle. You come at Ashley and you talk about her age and, you know, you compare her to a little kid. And, oh, she's just now coming out of college. That's why why she did this and did that. But yet your behavior at this whole thing was very much childlike. You act like you were your daughter's age and they probably act like would have act like they had more sense than you did. Okay. Where was the etiquette that y'all always claim and talking about? Um, does it say in that etiquette rule book that you're supposed to act so ungrateful, so disrespectful and so rude as something that was free for you? Okay, you didn't have to pay for nothing. I'm pretty sure Bravo put out and let y'all get them cars to come out there. Hell, Katie drove the motherfucking car, okay? And all you had to do was show up, nothing else. And you are ungrateful because of your sleeping arrangement? I'll get on that in a minute. So Katie got all the girls together. Well, Robin, um, Giselle, and Ashley, they talking about her fundraiser. And she wants the girls to be involved and all this stuff and, you know, trying to tell them what it is that she wants them to do. And they ask the question, um, well, girl, when you want all this stuff done, do you have a venue? Do you know if you're doing the gala? What are you doing? I don't know if it's going to be an all white. I don't know what. But, I mean, we got three venues and I'm trying to raise $100,000. But here's the thing. This is going on in, like, three weeks. And they like, girl, what? So they questioning her, like, how are you going to get all this done? This is a short amount of time. This is not really realistic. And Katie's like, everything that I put on, it always goes off without a hitch and all this stuff. So she gets in her feelings and basically kick them off the fundraiser, off the, um, the committee or whatever, the host committee. And, I mean, I understand she felt the way because they was coming at her, but they had some, they was right about what they saying. It was too, you should have came to, if you want help and you knew that you was doing this, don't come to me asking all this stuff that you want done in this little amount of time. I am not a party planner. I am not this. I am not that. I am volunteering my services. And when I volunteer my service, I want to be let known in advance what's going on so that I can have enough time to offer the best service that I can give you, you know, that's what I want. So I understood that, but she got in her feelings over that. So, Hey, it is what it is. So they getting ready to go to, uh, the beach house and everything, because that's where, um, Ashley was inviting them to go and all that stuff for the uh, weekend. And, you know, we got this thing with Robin and her son. He was on her, on the computer trying to order some shoes. I said, boy, if you don't stop. And she was like, you know, with all the stuff that's going on, she need a break from, you know, everything. So this weekend break is cool. Ashley talking to her friend about what's going on, you know, trying to make an impression on the girls and all this stuff. Ashley, let me just sit. Let me just tell you this. Because you mentioned it to Karen in the car when y'all was driving to um, the beach house in Bethany that you wanted to be a part of the group so bad. You want everybody to like, like you. You just want to be so involved. Like, girl, let me tell you something. These women... I don't know if they trying to haze you. I don't know if they do giving you a hard time because they really don't like you or what it is. But you should never, ever, ever try to fit in to somewhere where you really don't belong. These women do not give a damn about you. And they have shown it to you time and time again. You are offering free services to them. You are offering them to come and lay in they lay heads in you and your husband's house. Okay. And yet they do nothing but fucking complain. Okay. They talk shit about you behind your back. They do all this shit. Talk about your husband and all this stuff. But yet you still trying to get involved with them. Girl, be yourself. Go and be with somebody that you care about. Okay. That actually care about you and not about judging you and not about trying to change you to fit their mold. You got to change. You got to act this way if you want to be in a part of this. Okay. You don't fit them. All right. You are not on that level of snootiness. Okay. You are still loose. You are still young and you are still growing and you are still young. Okay. So therefore you ain't there yet. You ain't reached that level of let me stick my nose in the air yet. You're not there yet. Move the fuck on and let these old bras go, okay? Quit it. 
go to your own age group, all right? Because these motherfuckers, they just, mm, I don't even care if I skip some stuff, okay? Um, they finally driving, uh, Karen and uh, Katie, they drive, no, Karen and Ashley drive down to um, um, the beach house, you know? Karen had this, uh, like, thing with her um husband he was she was like you know she told me it's like five bedrooms in the house and I'm saying I'm getting my own room because I don't share I'm, I'm a grown woman I don't share a room with another woman I'm not into that and then you know Katie she just revealed that you know she's kind of bisexual whatever Ray was all here for a threesome or some shit she was like cross that shit off the bucket list I said look at Ray all oh, this <laughs> and um you know so when Ashley pulled up in her little two-seater and her little baby uh um puppy was in the car Karen looking like well I don't know how this gonna work it's a two-seater and a dog all over the seat girl the dog gonna be in the back which he was in his little thing they talking and discussing stuff um it's a three-hour ride there Katie and the other girls coming in another car Katie was driving um Katie got in her feelings because they started talking about you know uh this thing about Mary kill fuck or whatever and they started listing names. And they was like, Katie, would you do T.I.? Would you do this? Well, who haven't you done? You know? And I was like, damn, I didn't know Katie got around like that. And they started talking about her relationship with Russell Simmons and how at one point she basically was moved to the guest house. And um, he was just flaunting the fact that he had another relationship. And she got pissed off and wrote a blog about it. Now, she brought up the blog and all this stuff. So, I mean, Katie, you around these motherfucking people and you know how petty they are. So, of course, they're going to look it up. And I'm not going to sit here and act like if somebody said that I know said that they wrote a blog and all this stuff, I would have sat there and looked that shit up, too. I would have looked it up, too. But, you know, she admitted uh, later on in the episode she was surprised at herself for getting her feelings because Katie was talking about it. Well, Giselle was reading it. Giselle is messy. Giselle likes mess. That's what she do. Okay? And Giselle turned me off this whole episode. But, um, you know... Katie pulls over because she was in her feelings, but whatever. They finally get to the house, and, you know, Karen was talking to Ashley about how the room situation was going to go. She was like, it's going to go by relationship. Of course, I'm going to get my own room. Karen, you're going to get your own room. Katie, you can get your own room. And then there's two other rooms that, you know, have two beds in them. So, Sharice and her um, friend can sleep in a room, and Giselle and Robinson, they're close. Okay, so the, they get to the house. You know, the house is beautiful. It looks better than some of the other homes, especially Giselle's. No line, no shade, you know. But And I said that because she had a lot of shit to say, you know, about the rooming arrangement. I'm just sitting here. I understand that once they got there, she did put out there about the rooms and all this stuff. Okay, granted, she didn't tell y'all all what was going to happen and that, oh, I had y'all section off this and that and that. Okay, maybe she could have told y'all that. But like she said later... I felt like I should. I didn't want to tell you that because you probably wouldn't have showed up. And it's Giselle and them, and they so fucking petty and all that stuff. And and, and got they oh it's not up to my standard and all this stuff. So they probably wouldn't have shown up. You know, even though she said we would have showed up, I was like, girl, you probably just saying that to make her feel good or something. But um, Katie uh, Ashley went and brought a chef in, and I looked at the chef and I said, girl, this ain't gonna end well. <laughs> this ain't gonna end well. I was like, what does she know about? Me? Okay, we're going to try it out, Ashley. And sure enough, they was eating the food. And the food, they just wasn't liking the food. And Ashley was doing all that she could to try to impress these women, right? And I'm like, you putting out too much effort for them, okay? I'm I'm allowing you to stay in my house. And I understand, you know, try to be a good hostess and all that stuff. But they expect way too much. And when the food came down, the Cherie's friend was like, they could have stopped at the salad. That's it. And I was just like, ugh, and you going to say it out loud? God damn. That's so fucking rude and disrespectful. And then they go to the room situation. Karen shows her room. Katie gets her room. And um, then when, when Ashley shows Giselle and them their room, Giselle gets so upset and in her feelings. I don't care if she was playing, but she really wasn't playing. She was dead ass serious. Oh, I don't sleep on twin size bed. My kids' beds are bigger than this and this and that and all this stuff. Who does this? I'm a grown ass woman. I'm not sleeping this and then Cherie. This ain't 
ain't my well this ain't my name because my name is spelled with two R's and all that stuff and um we might as well just go look for hotels. These bitches sat there and Googled trying to look up hotels in the area and did not even try and make it um, they made it known that they was going to do this right in front of Ashley. I'm sitting here like, how fucking rude and disrespectful. Like, this girl went out of her way to invite you into her home. Okay, first of all, we found out that, um, Ashley is a stepmother to a 23 and a 21-year-old. Mind you, Ashley is 27 years old. Bitch, we ain't stepmama. You stepsister, bitch. That's what the fuck you are, okay? <laughs> I'd be good that damn if we damn near the same age and I call you my stepmama. You daddy's girlfriend, okay? That's what you are. But, um, yeah, it was just so fucking rude and had your mouth pouting about it the whole damn time. And I'm sitting here like, but you want to talk about this girl being young, but you acting like a fucking child. I didn't, I, I wasn't here for that shit. I wasn't here for that shit. And they were just going in on her the whole time. I was just like, uh, but when the chef came up there and gave her that bill, <laughs> that was... <laughs> I see a bitch. First of all, I ain't never seen no shit like that. I didn't see people on these reality shows do catering events and all that stuff. I ain't never seen the chef come up to the post person and give them the bill right there in front of all the guests. I ain't never seen no shit like that. Now, I would have looked at that like, ooh, you could have told me to come to the side and we could have did this shit outside or some shit. You ain't have to come up at me like that. But, you know, it's always... If I would have did this, and if I did this, if we had this event, I would have did it this way. It's not your event, okay? Let her just do it how she want to. It's called going outside of your fucking comfort zone. Damn. Y'all are still getting to know this girl, and you just sh p p pulling her down. Every time she try to do something, you knock it down, you knock it down. I just couldn't believe that Giselle acted that way. And then the next day, you know, they cooked breakfast, and then they went out, and, um... They went to the beach. They was going to do some surfing lessons. Of course, Giselle, Sharice, and um, Karen wasn't going to do it. Karen looked nice in her baby suit. I will say that. And um, they get there. They sit down. They don't want to participate because they old as fuck. Giselle worrying about getting her head wet and all this shit. Bitch, let me tell you something, Giselle. I've been trying to hold out, but yo, <laughs> getting your head wet is the least of your troubles. Mind you, you need to get your hair wet because whoever do your weave, you need to fire them, okay? You really do need to fire them. You look like you install that shit yourself because it looks fucked up every time I see it. It looks raggedy as shit. And don't tell me that that hair costs in the thousands of dollars because I'm going to tell you to go get your fucking refund, okay? You looking like raggedy and shit, especially the one with that bang and stuff. You just be looking fucked up, okay? And you talk the most shit. And the only thing that's getting you by is your green eyes and your light skin. That's the only reason why. You need to stop that bullshit because you got an ugly personality when you want to. And it's not cute. And I'm not liking that. Okay? Because I really liked you on that first and couple of the first few episodes. I really liked you until you start showing your green eye monsters other side of you. Okay? Like every time you you call Katie dumb. All right. Katie was like, bitch, you got some nerves to talk when your husband out here all up in the news about all the hoes he fucking around with, your ex-husband. Bitch, and I was just like, Katie, go off, but you should have said that to her, you know? So they out there learning how to surf and stuff and having a good time. They sent back talking shit about him. I'm just like, y'all should have stayed at home, okay? And, and, and got some sun on the patio if y'all was just going to sit here and talk shit. It was cute about the little booty judging you know, thing, but that, that kind of irked me, and then they go get some crabs and all that stuff, and Ashley, panties are used to soak up the, I don't wear panties, I wear, um, box briefs and shit like that, but the shit is used to soak the shit up, you know, the sweat and all that stuff, it's used as a fucking shield, now when you go to sleep at night, you know, it's best that you don't sleep with nothing on, so that your area, and this is for everybody, and this has been, you know, recommended and all this stuff, so look it up if you want to check, uh, fact check, to let that shit breathe and let um all that bacteria and stuff out of there. But especially in the summertime when it's hot, you wear some drawers, bitch. Okay, so you don't sit down and then all your sweat stains be on your light colored ass dress. Girl, I looked at Ashley like this is why they talk about your ass, okay? Come on now, quick getting them ammunition. And so they cooking and all this stuff. They sitting down there eating crabs and they was gonna do this circle uh, sister circle. Child, who was it? 
actually bringing up talking about going to the bathroom in front of your man and all that stuff and how, you know, Michael come in the bathroom and just be talking and she be doing number two and she be talking. I said, first of all, this is not the conversation that you have, you know, when you um eating. But, you know, at least they took it with stride and they was like, girl, I don't do that shit. Katie was like, I try not to fight in front of my man. Sometimes it just come on out, but I try so hard. Karen said, uh-uh, after all the years we've been married, you will never hear me um, doing number two in front of him. You will never see me fart in front of him. I said, I know that's right, bitch. Let me tell you something. And when she said that, Karen reminded me of my girlfriend. She told me, bitch, you will never, ever, ever know when I'm finna take a number two, okay? You will never, ever know it, smell it, and all that stuff. And I'm like, but, babe, I be doing this shit right there in front of your ass. Like, I don't give a shit about that stuff. And she was like, well, that's because you like a nigga anyway. I was like, I mean, maybe, but damn, I'm comfortable. Come on now. Get about that mode. But that, that so that little conversation had me um, laughing because it just reminded me of, you know, my situation or whatever so then they started doing the uh sharice do this sister circle thing and they go around talking about the good things about each body each person and this is when giselle had a hard time coming up saying something about katie and basically was like i like the fact that you're brilliant you know i at first you be saying stuff and i'd be like what is going on and then i have a thing and then i'm like okay she be saying so many big words that means that she's smart or some shit like that it was a backhanded compliment that's how katie took it and katie gonna confront her on it next week so then uh sharice friend said something about katie because they had when they was going to get the crabs they kind of bonded a little bit and katie let said sharice and her friend could be on a committee and they was talking about it and they was cool and sharice friend was like you know i like that you real you down to earth and all this stuff even when you was talking about um Damn, she called her out about something. She was like, you know, when we first met, yeah, at the party and you and Andrew was just getting it in. I was like, girl, what's she doing and all this stuff? And this, once again, you bring up this topic, which will be discussed next week. They want it because, again, Giselle just don't understand what was going on with Katie. I'm sitting here like, so you mean to tell me you never, ever had one of those nights where you just drunk as fuck? You come to the event drunk? That don't mean that you on drugs or whatever? So I, I it just irks me that automatically she went to the drugs thing okay you mean to tell me you ain't never got drunk you mean to tell me you ain't never had a little fucked up night or a little crazy night like that i mean we all done had it okay bitch when i was at the black house i was drunk as shit lyric had to bondy's um boyfriend's fiance had to fucking take my drink because i damn near wasted that shit on the floor bitch that was what it was i wasn't on no drugs i was drunk okay that's what it was why do you automatically went to drugs and thinking that something is wrong just because she was enjoying herself whatever that was just irritated me you know um and then they go inside and they start talking Giselle talking about Putin in front of or taking the shit in front of Mr. Miami or whatever the fuck and then um Cherise was talking about how she don't know what she's gonna do with this divorce or whatever and I remember that she said y'all she sent a text message to him and said we might as well just get a divorce and all this stuff and I'm about to say bitch you bogus as fuck but then I had to remember I broke up with an ex before through a text message and never responded back to the motherfucker okay that's what it was I was like so you know we in the same boat I can't judge because bitch I did the same damn thing and left that shit along and said bitch boom by gosh there you go but um True story. Uh, I, I will tell y'all about that one day, but <laughs> I have to decide. It's fucked up, but hey, I didn't feel nothing about it. Whatever the fuck. It is what it is. If I was to tell you, you'll understand why. But um, moving on from that, and then Robin was about to say something, and she just broke out crying. But before that, you know, Karen related and said that, you know, uh, her mother has dementia and she wish she can take that away, but she know you can and all that stuff. So we saw a real moment with Karen and I was like, okay, now you seeming like a real person to me. And then Robin just broke out crying before she can say what was going on. And then she said, basically, it was a friend of Juan's or whatever, theirs, that was taking money for them for years. And I said, that's fucked up. And then it said, to be continued. But that was Real Housewives of Potomac. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I will see y'all later. I got to go catch up on Once Upon a Time. I got to go catch up on The Walking Dead. Quantico back. Yes, yeah. i see y'all later. And The Family. Yes, quit asking me, do I watch The Family? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm finna go catch up on everything. No, I won't be reviewing it, but yes, I do. Peace.